Praise God. Good evening to everyone once again. May the Lord Almighty God bless you. And it's your own brother, Pastor Bernard Entry. It's always a joy to be with you live from Choices Radio and TV in Coventry. It's an honor to share the word of God and to share something very important. And as I have already stated, any time I come here, I come for us to educate ourselves, to impact ourselves, so that we all can become a people of influence. And tonight, I'm so much blessed to come along your way once again to bring you something very important that will transform the life of many people listening to me. Wherever you are, I just want to encourage you once again, when we start the message, just click on share on Facebook and just share the message, everyone listening tonight. May the Lord bless you, wherever you are hearing my voice from. I love you with the love of God. You know, it's always a joy and a privilege. I don't take this for granted to come into your life. And may the Lord bless you. Choices TV and Radio is right in the center of England in Coventry on Fuzzy Road. You can contact them for video editing, funerals, weddings, and many things. Feel free and give them a call on the number showing on the screen. May the Lord bless you. And I bring you greetings all the way from United Kingdom. Everywhere you are hearing my voice from. I bring you greetings from United Kingdom, Coventry, and from every member of Faithway Global Ministries. That is where the Lord has placed me as a head pastor. May the Lord bless you, and I know we are all going to enjoy the word of God together. And tonight, last week I was here, and we studied something very important about overcoming excuses. Today, I'll be sharing with you which is the 9th, the 10th of September. I am sharing with you what I have entitled tonight, Overcoming Your Past. Overcoming Your Past. Overcoming Your Past. That's the topic for tonight, Overcoming Your Past. And it's very crucial, and it's very, very important that we learn to overcome the past. Anyone who wants to move into a new season, a new dimension in life, must learn, first learn, to deal with their past. So tonight I'm sharing with you overcoming your past. And I know all of you, everyone hearing my voice, you have a past that you are dealing with, a past that you are believing God uh, to overcome. I have a past. And until you overcome your past, you cannot move into a new season. And wherever you are, I just want to say, may the Lord bless you tonight. Let's pray. Father, we commit tonight's service into your hand. The word that is about to come, we pray for your wisdom. We pray for understanding. We pray for grace that let your word bring enlightenment. And let every powers of darkness be broken. According to your word, that brings illumination. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you once again. Everywhere you are, I want to assure you that regardless of what you are going through, there is always hope. I often tell people that hope is the God factor of life. And once you don't give up in life and you are consistent and you persevere, ah, nothing can break you in life. God will give you victory. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let us deal with what I have entitled Overcoming Your Past. Where there is a present, there is also a past. And there are two entities that we are incubated with, which is the past and the future. And in life, everyone has a past. Everyone regardless to who you are. And one of the things I said last week that successful people have the habit of eliminating negative attitude from their lives. Can I repeat again? 
successful people have the habit of eliminating negative attitudes from their life. So in other words, successful people keep doing well in life. They keep improving every day because they have the attitude or the habit or the consistency of eliminating or fighting against every negative attitude in their life. In other words, they are people that examine and recognize their weakness and every day work on their weakness and strength. So one of the attitudes that we need to deal with in order to become successful in whatever vision or purpose we are pursuing is to learn to overcome the past. Until you learn to overcome your past, it's very impossible and highly impossible for you to move into a new future. So tonight I am so blessed to share with you overcoming your past. And I know as you're listening to me right now, you have a past and most people have encountered in life. They have past life that they are struggling to overcome. A lot of people are still going through pains of some of the things they have done in the past. But I have good news for you tonight. The Bible speaks in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, when you become a new creation, all things are gone. When a man is born again, he's a new creation. All things are gone. When you become a child of God, God doesn't remember your past anymore. You see, God doesn't remember your past. He doesn't remember what you did yesterday. He only remembers what you are today. But the enemy, one of the common weapons the enemy is using to fight a lot of Christians is their past. A lot of people are, are born again, Holy Ghost, fire, baptized in the Holy Ghost. But they are still fighting with their past because they are going through what is called guilt. And it's my prayer tonight that as we study this topic, you will learn to overcome your past. You will learn to rise against anything that is fighting your past. You can never become successful. You can never move into a new season in life. If you are somebody who is going through or battling with how to deal with your past. Past. You are not the only one going through. And I want you to understand this. Points. Nobody has a good, not everyone in life has a good start. I want you to understand that not everyone in life has a good start. Not everyone in life has a good start in life. Some of us, our beginning seems unusual. <laughs> Just like Jabesh, his beginning seems unusual. It seemed there was no hope. This is a guy who was born in pain. And because of the pain, the mother even called him Jabesh, meaning pain. Most of us, our the way we began life didn't seem attractive. <laughs> Your life didn't seem, the beginning of the journey didn't seem convinced that you can be where you are today. And that is how life is. Not everyone has a good start. And also having a good start does not necessarily mean you have a good finish. There are people who came from rich background when we were young. But when you look at their life today, you realize their end hasn't finished well. Persistency and perseverance breaks resistance. It's very important to understand that life is about holding on. It's about fighting with even the last breath of your life. That until the day you die, you never give up. That's what I like about David, Psalm 27 verse 14. David said, as long as I live on this earth, I will never cease to doubt. As long as he has life. 
You see, life in general is a battle. Life is a war. And you are meant to win the war because you are bound to be a winner. But one of the keys that will help you to win the battles of life is able to overcome your past. Some of you, you have allowed your past life. There are people who are still dealing with their past mistakes in life. Life, no one is perfect. We are all going to make mistakes. As a pastor, I keep making mistakes all the time. But can I tell you something? You know, Roosevelt says something that I am not ashamed of my past. And I'm not ashamed of my present. Because my past has become part of what I am today. Some of you, some of the mistakes you have done in life is fighting your destiny. It's battling with your life. It's telling you you can't make it. Some of the errors and the mistakes of life is telling you you can never be what God says you are. Let me announce to you, one of the people who could have given up in life was Moses. Moses has a past of a murderer, a past of killing someone. So in fact, when God called Moses, one of the excuses Moses gave was that I cannot become a leader because I'm a murderer. Some of you are hearing my voice, your past. People are using your past to limit your future. Don't allow anyone to define you, your past, with your future. Your past is a history. Your past is a story. It should not become what you are born to be in life. Moses had a past. In the book of John, I love the Bible. One of the women I love in the Bible was the Samaritan woman. The Bible says once upon a time, Jesus was with the disciples. And he said, I must need to go to Samaria. Because there's a woman whom people are using her past life to ridicule and to mock such person. And the Bible says when Jesus got to Samaria, uh, there was a well. And Jesus sat at the well. And a woman came to draw water from the well. And Jesus asked the woman, how many give me water to drink? And G the woman said, who are you to ask me water? And Jesus said, if you know who I am, you give me water to drink. And the water I have for you, you will drink and you'll never be water thirsty. And Jesus spoke to this wonderful woman whom the whole city has ridiculed and mocked because she has a past life. She was a woman. That Jesus questioned, go and call me your husband. And the woman said, I am not, I don't have a husband. And Jesus said to the woman, yes, all the men you have been with, several men, but none is your husband. Yes, you catch that, my men, and I bow, bow, and say, when the men be brave to an amour, and so a mubi and yoke. The Bible says, in fact, Jesus, when the woman encountered Jesus, she began to have a different life. A different perspective. She ran to the whole city and called the men to come and witness what kind of man she has found. You know, in life, you don't have to give up. You don't have to cry. Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty eight, He says, Come unto me, all you who are tired and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Cast all your burden upon him, for he cares. The woman became an evangelist. The first woman in the Bible who became an evangelist was that woman. The Bible says she ran after Jesus, has spoken to her. And she went to evangelize to the whole city. And she even evangelized to the men and told them to come and also hear the good news. From that day, Jesus gave that woman a new life, a new beginning. Someone, you are hearing my voice, and people are mocking you with your past. 
Your friends are telling you you cannot do that business. You cannot fulfill that destiny. You are not qualified to be that person you desire to be in life. You are not qualified to become what God says you are because of your past. Do not allow your past to become a hindrance to fulfilling your destiny in life. Your past is part of what God wants to use your destiny to become. You all, we all have a past. Nobody in life who do not have a past. David was a man who became a king in the book of First Samuel and Second Samuel. We hear the story of a young man called David whose life from the beginning wasn't good. In fact, his beginning wasn't attractive. The life of David was that David was born out of wedlock. The family didn't like David. Even his own brothers hated him. But yet, David did not allow his past. He didn't allow his condition of how he was born. Whether he was born into a, a wedlock family, he just knew that God is with him. Don't allow people to, you know, hinder. Don't allow people to label you because of your past. Nobody in life is perfect. In fact, there is always a saying, if you meet any successful man, ask the story behind. <laughs> when you meet any successful man, ask their story behind their success. Some of you have given up too early in life. A lot of people are hearing my voice. You have given up so early in life. God wants to bless you. God, I said God wants to bless you. God wants to use you as an instrument of blessing. And, and, but you have given up so much. You have given up too quick in life. You have allowed your past to become a hindrance to moving ahead in life. The Bible says God appeared to Moses and told Moses, Moses, you have dwelt here for so long. You have tarried here. You have waited here for so long. Move forward in life. Some of you are hearing my voice. You have stayed where you are for so long. I want to encourage you. I want to inspire you. Tonight, I want to empower you. That after hearing this message, you rise up and say, My past is no more going to hold me. The mistakes I have done in life is not going to, you know, tell me or, or direct my path in life. I am not going to allow my yesterday to direct my future. I am not going to allow the things I have done to detect how I live life. It's very important. God wants to bless you. One of the reasons God wants to bless you is because he wants to make you an example to the world. Mm. God wants to showcase you to the world. When God says, I want to bless you, he really meant he wants to bless you. Mm. Some of you are saying, God want to restore unto you the years the locust, the caterpillar, the canker worms have eaten. But you must learn to let go of your yesterday. God want to restore unto you. He wants to. God want to bless you. Stop holding on to your past. Stop holding on to your what? Your past. Let go of your yesterday. God want to meet your needs. And meet the needs of your family and your ministry. You know, someone was talking to me yesterday. And the person said, Pastor, I have started university. But I'm thinking how I'm going to afford to pay my fees. And I told the person, If you can give everything to God, by the time you realize, you'll be doing your graduation. You'll be celebrating. Because God is always willing to meet our needs. Because we are human beings sometimes we look at our lenses of our physical eye and we forget what our spiritual eyes we forget what faith is saying about our life god is willing 
God wants to use you to make you an instrument of his work. God is a God that has a purpose and a plan for your destiny. But before God can use you, you have to let go your past. So, onyami beti ma yusu. Na what do I insure we are here? And no man will chem. I chem wa bra bom ni manenko. Let go. Someone, if you are hearing my voice, let go. Let go of your past. Learn to overcome your past. Many people have disappointed you, but let go. Yes, the woman promised to marry you. The man promised to marry you. They didn't marry you. Let go. Let go. A lot of people rejected you in life. Let the bitterness go. Many people have hurt you in life. Let it go. Joseph had to let, learn to let go of his past. The brothers hated him, Genesis 37. He had a dream. The brothers hated him. They put him in a pit. He went to his master's house in Egypt. Potiphar's wife accused Joseph. The Bible said Joseph was put into prison for a crime the young man never committed. But in order for Joseph to become Joseph and to fulfill his destiny as a prime minister, the young man needed to let go of his past. He needed to always have a new perspective. He had to always learn to let go and to move ahead. If Joseph would have just hold on to his past, he would have never become a prime minister. Most of you are hearing me tonight. You are born to become great people. You are born to become people of impact and influence. You are born to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. But you have allowed your past to hold you. You have allowed the voice of your past to detect what God wants to do in your life. You see, one of the things that couldn't allow the Israelites to enter the promised land was that they, the Bible says they had been in captivity or slavery for 400 years. And God had told Abraham that your descendants will be in slavery for 400 years. But I will give them the land. So God had always wanted to bless the Israelites. And one of the reasons most people couldn't see the promised land is because of their past. They were not prepared for the future. They kept on holding on to their past. In fact, on the desert or on the wilderness, they thought any time they encounter small challenge, they will refer to Egypt. They will tell Moses, Moses, have you brought us here to what? To kill us. Moses, have you brought us here? That hunger will kill us. You could have left us in Egypt to die. A lot of people, your biggest issue you are facing in life is still holding on to your past. God told, you know, through Abraham, Lot and the family received a message that they must run from Sodom. But the instruction was no one was to look back. But the wife of Lot, the Bible says, we should be careful of what happened to Lot's wife. We should remember what Lot's wife. The Bible says Lot's wife turned back and she became a pillar of salt. Most of us, we want to go ahead in life. But we are still holding on to certain things of our past. We cannot let certain things go. Certain character go. We are holding on to certain friends that God is saying, let them go because I have a new season for you. You are still holding on to the same friends, the same people. God is saying, let go. Don't be like lost wife who by virtue of disobedience became a pillar of salt. Some of you, God is taking you out of your Sodom. But yet you are holding Onto the same lifestyle. You're holding on to the same character. You're holding on to the same thing, the same mindset. God wanted to take the Israelites into a promised land. Now onyami person what the Israelites for the cobot shouts as so. Now so now woman and Sisanda. 
The same way they do things, they were not ready to change. They were still holding on to their past. <laughs> you know, a friend of mine told me a story. He said a Chinese company went to Ghana and they manufactured a machine and other equipment so that many people of the local people, they will not pound fufu. One of the common food in Ghana is called fufu. And what we use is we pound fufu in a mortar. We pound fufu. And we used our strength. And those who know how fufu is pound. Sometimes the person pounding the fufu with a pistol. There is so much of sweat. That by the time the fufu is finished, sweat will be in the mortar. And a company manufactured equipment that you just don't need to pound fufu anymore. Some local people said they will not buy the equipment because when you pound the fufu, it's more sweet than <laughs> doing it in the machine. A Nippa Bebre say, a Mrofubi, and I yes, Chinese will be here. A normal machine in normal. What the year for Fuananka, a doubt and quiet go on what But yes, a Kodru Ghana, no, Nippa Bebrezi, there be for Fun, what what now would dear? And no air destiny, the other machine I am. I believe that is the mindset of many people. But I believe this that though the company that made the machine was one of the reasons they made the machine was that we will save more time. Number two, we will not use our strength to pound the fufu. So they wanted to make things become convenient. But the local people, most of them said, when you pound the fufu in the mortar and you eat it, it's more sweeter than the one using machine. So the company went busted. That was what I was told. Most of us, we are still holding on to certain traditions and culture. We are still holding on to the same things we used to do. Our grandfathers did 50 years, 500 years ago. The same lifestyle, the same way. Our forefathers did things. The new generation, we must learn to let go of the past. Learn to let go so that we can move into a new future and letting go to let go of your past it's very important we renew our mind now let me read to you one of my favorite bible verses favorite bible verses let me read isaiah 43 isaiah 43 verse 18 to 19. let's see the book of isaiah isaiah 43 verse 18 to 19. Okay. Isaiah 43, verse 18 to 19. The Bible says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road or a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Isaiah 43, verse 18 to 19. Prophet Isaiah is telling us through the word of God that we should not remember the former things. We should let go of yesterday because God wants to do a new thing. Someone is hearing my voice tonight and I want to encourage you. God is willing to do something new in your life. But Whatever you could not achieve yesterday, let go. Whatever you couldn't do yesterday, let go. Because God is willing to give you a new life, a new season. Let go of, the, of your past. Stop every day complaining of those who have 
hurt you and those who have disappointed you in life. I've said to you, let go. The business couldn't work. They promised to help you. Let go. God is always willing to bring something new in your life. And until you let go your past, God cannot do something new in your life. The Bible said, let go. Don't remember the past. The Bible is teaching us to let go of our yesterday. Let go. The Bible says you cannot put a new wine into an old wine. When you take a bottle of water and you pour into a, an old bottle, there are chances that if the bottle is dirty, the water will be corrupted. Anybody want to move into a new season, you must learn to let go your past. Learn to let go your yesterday. Learn to forget the things of your former days. Because why? God wants you to step into a new future. God wants to bring you into a new what? Season. A new what? Season. A new season means God wants to give you a new vision. God wants to give you what? A new vision. God wants you to re-examine your life. He wants to give you a new perspective. God wants to give you a new priority. God wants to give you a new life. Stop worrying about the things you lost. The company that could, it didn't work yesterday. Yes, you lost money. Some of you are hearing my voice. You have gone through divorce. And you think you can never have a good chance of marriage again. God is the restorer of broken walls. Whatever you have lost in life. Whatever that couldn't work in life, if you can turn to God, the Bible says He's the restorer of broken walls. And the Bible says He says, I will restore unto you the years the caterpillar, the canker worm, the locust, the palm worms have stolen. God is always willing not just to restore, but to also restitute you. God is a God of restoration. The God I serve is a God. That all the years you have missed in life, your pains that you have gone through, God can use one day by favor to change your destiny. It's my prayer that favor will locate you tonight in the name of Jesus. As you hear my voice and you are willing to give all to God, may favor of God locate your destiny. Learn to let go. God is always willing to bless you more. He's willing to give you more than what you lost yesterday. He's willing to give you what you could not achieve. All of us are sitting here as you hear my voice. I didn't have a good start in life. There were people who promised to help me. They disappointed me. There were families that rejected me because they didn't see me as a person who I was. I will become what I am today. Anytime you are rejected in life, count it as joy. Because I have always seen something in life that it seems anytime you get rejected, then God accepts you. Without rejection, there is no acceptance in life. The family of Jabesh, the Jephthah, in the book of Judges, they rejected him. But the Bible says God took Jephthah into a land of Tob. The meaning of Tob is called land of good. And God connected Jephthah to good men. The same with Joseph. The same with David. It seems to me when men reject you, God always calls people to accept you in life. Yes, people promise to help you. I have been there before. I have shed tears before. Those who promise to help me to finish university, to do all my courses I desire to become, they rejected me. They disappointed me. But God, never. The Bible says your father will forsake you. Your mother will forsake you. But I, God, will never leave you alone. It's in life until you understand that human being is human being. You will ever go through pains. Some of you, you are hearing my voice. But you are going through pains in life because of your yesterday. Learn to let go. Learn to what? Let go. Let me read something important to you. Philippians chapter 3. Let's read. Let's go to Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Mm. 
It's important you learn to let go. The Bible teaches us to let go of our yesterday. E, my God. God is a God of a new beginning. We serve a God of a chance, second chance. Let go. Let go. I know someone whose marriage is not working. I know of a man whom the woman just stood up one day and said, I can't marry you anymore. And I told the man, you did never plan to divorce your wife. Because you are struggling in life, she has walked out from the marriage. Let go. Just put your hope in God. Put your hope in what? In God. And let's see if God will not give you a new life. Let go of your past. For me to be where I am today by the special grace of God, I have to always learn to let go of my past. Because your past can bring you memories of pain. And if you are not careful, you hold on to the pains of your past. And you never see the life that God has designed for you. Let go of your past. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Let's see what Paul says. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 going. Paul, I love Paul. He says, now that I, not that I have already attained, or I am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has laid hold for me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, Paul says, one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press towards the goal of the prize, the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. But let me read again the 13. The 13. Paul said, Brethren, I do not count myself that I have apprehended, but one thing I do, Paul says one thing he does, forgetting those things which are behind him and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Paul said one thing he, he does, that he learned to forget his past and he pressed on towards the mark, towards the destiny that is ahead of him. Someone hearing my voice tonight, one thing I want to beg you to do this year, do it for me, for Pastor Bernard. One thing I want you to do for me is that you learn to let go your past and you look forward. Look forward because God has a better plan for you. The Bible is speaking in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. God says, I have a plan for you, not of evil, but plans of good and to give you an unexpected end. The plan, the ultimate plan of God is to always bring, bring us to a place of blessing. You know, Psalm 66 verse 12. God says, Psalm 66 verse 12. God says, I have allowed men to trample over you. And I have allowed you to go through the rivers, the fire and the waters. But I have purpose to bring you to a place of abundance, a place of rest, a place of blessing. God says you have gone through the fire. Some of you are hearing my voice. You have gone through fire. What for no men, what for Jim? That's when you come and say, or the home, or the Israel, or the Israel. Some of you, you have gone through the turbulences of life. But I want to encourage you tonight. That God says, I am about to bring you into a place of rest. As you hear my voice tonight, may God grant you rest. May God give you peace in the name of Jesus. Paul said, one thing I do, not that I have arrived, not that I have achieved a lot in life, but one thing I do, Paul said, one thing, one thing he do, he does, he, he, he forget his past. So that he can focus on the bright future ahead of him. Now let me share something with you. Anybody who drives a car, you see the rear screen or the front screen is bigger than the side mirrors. You know why? Because the side mirrors are used to watch your back. The front mirror is used to go ahead. I believe so much the reason the manufacturer of the cars 
made the front mirror so big is that they are telling you it's important to look at your back. Where you let is so important, but where you are going is more important. So they made the front mirror so that you see your way ahead clear. You see clearly in life. That is how your life is designed. God always wants to make sure that what is ahead of you is more greater than your yesterday. What you have achieved in life is even less than what you are about to achieve. What you have ahead is greater than what lies behind you. Let go of your yesterday. Paul said one thing I do. One of the things, most important thing you need to do in life is to learn to let go your past. You have cried enough. Someone hearing my voice, you have shed tears enough. Yes, you lost a loved one. You lost your job. Yes, it's true. It is very painful, but let go. Let go. Helen Keller said, when one door closes, another door opens. There is always a second chance. God is a God of grace. He's a merciful God. And he's always willing to bring you into a new season. Let go. Let go. One day I will speak on the message, divine timing. Sometimes when your divine appointment hasn't come, and you are going through your period of wilderness, you will think that life is not even good to live. To live. You think that even there is no joy in life. Most of you are hearing my voice. You think that when is this situation going to end? I have a good news. God says, let go. God wants to bring you to a new place, a new season, a new dimension. But you must let go your past. Paul said, one thing I do is to let go of my yesterday. That I can see the new blessing God has for me. Let go. Somebody let go. Let go. Let go so that God can bring into God can bring you God can what bring you into a new place of fulfillment now let me give you a few keys few keys to what bury your past one of the keys you need to bury your past is number one you must understand that life or you must understand that life no condition is permanent child of God or anyone hearing my voice to overcome your past or to bury your past, you must understand that no condition is what permanent. I often tell people, never commit suicide in life. Men show one come for. Never commit suicide in life. Now, suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Suicide is a what? A permanent solution to a temporary problem. The fact that you are going through a problem doesn't mean you will not overcome. And social now will come, whatever you are going through, social now will come, the child. Whatever you are going through, a time will come, a season will come, it shall be over. I have one message I love preaching. It shall come to pass. Your situation shall come to pass. Let people talk about you. You don't have stay. You don't have a job. You are not married. You didn't go to university. You don't, whatever people are saying about you, let them say, a season will come, those who are saying, who are you? They will say, how are you? Those who are asking, who is this man? A time will come, they will say, how is this man? No condition is ever permanent. Please, don't commit suicide. Suicide is a permanent solution to something temporary. Don't die. Don't commit suicide. Number two, to bury your past. Allow God to be the center of your life. Some of us, we have made God a back tire. To bury your past, let God be the center of your life. Jesus said, cast all your burdens upon me for I care. Some of you are struggling in life, holding on to your past. Because you have not let God be the source of your destiny. The Israelites had a better future. God planned Canaan for them. But their perspective was wrong. They, were, they didn't make God their source. They remember the miracles God did. But anytime they went through a small issue, they forget about God. If you are hearing my voice, put your hope in God. 
Let God become the center of your life. Number three, to overcome your past or to bury your past, you must have a right perspective. You must what have or develop right perspective. Life is about what you see and how you, inter you interpret life. When you must see from God's perspective, look in the lenses of God, through the word of God, that the Bible says, God is willing to bring me a new future. Develop a right perspective. Some of you, everything about your life is negative. Whatever that happens in your life, oh, the devil sent to destroy me. You see, I've always learned one thing in life. That whatever comes into my life, when the enemy wants to use it to destroy me, God uses it to prepare me. Some of you, you have wrong perspective about life. Everything about life, whatever you go through, you perceive that as negative. I want you to begin to have right perspective. I want you to renew your mind. I want you to begin to see things from God's perspective. Whatever you are going through, if you see that God is using everything in your life to prepare you for your future, like Joseph, he saw every adversity in his life as opportunity to learn something new. Develop right perspective. Have what positive mindset. Renew your mind. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world. In other words, don't let the world system mold you or push you into the way the world is designed. See things as God sees things. Amen. See things as what? How God sees. What is God telling you? The situation you are going through, what is God saying about that situation? With God, all things are possible. With man, nothing is what? Impossible. Develop what? Right perspective. It's very important. You develop what? Right what? Perspective. And number four, to bury your past, you must understand that there are questions you can never answer. And there are certain things you can never find solutions. What do I mean? In life, there are certain things that will happen to you. When someone dies, you can't find solution to death. You must understand that there are certain things in your life that has happened in your life. You will never find answers. There are certain things you can never explain in life. Let go. Let go. Some of you are battling with sicknesses because you are holding on to things. You are trying to find solution to certain things that happen in your life. You are trying to find explanation like Job. Why did this thing happen? And God told Job, I am God who have all the answers. Some of you, certain things to the day you die, you never understand. Let go. Number five, let God be God. Let God what? Be God. What do I mean? Some of you, you are holding on to your past and you cannot bury your past because you are trying to be God. You are fighting with your strength. The Bible said the arm of the flesh will fail you. Cursed be a man who put his hope in a man. But blessed is a man who put his hope in God. Even in dry season, the Bible says he will flourish. Some of you, the issue is you are trying to do everything by your strength. That is why you are struggling in life. One of the secrets to, secret to winning battles of life is to let God be God. David said, I do not concern myself with matters that are too high for me. There are certain things you can never know why they happen in your life. Let God be God. Leave certain matters. Leave certain battles. Some of you are fighting battles which are not good in life. Let God be God. Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I've run my race and I've what? Kept the faith. Some of you, some of the battles you are fighting in life are not good. You are fighting people who are, ang you are angry and fighting certain people in life. Let go. Let God. The Bible says, vengeance belongs to God. Let God fight your battles for you. He told Jehoshaphat, that see this day that I'll give you victory. He says what? I will win every battle for you. God is the God who knows how to fight well. 
Let God be the source of your life. Let God be God. Leave every battle for God. Leave what? Every battle for God. And the last one I want to give you. To bury your past, you must believe and hold on to every promises of God. Whatever God has said to you, you must have the faith to believe that it is possible. Now, Hebrew chapter 11 verse 1. The Bible says, faith is a substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. Verse 2. The Bible says, by this the elders receive a good report. Hold on to the promises of God. For the promises of God are good. They are yea and amen. Numbers. I love the book of Numbers. He says, our God is not a man he should lie. Neither the son of a man he should repent. For what God says he will do shall surely come to pass. Hold on to the promises of God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 4 verse 17 to 21. He says, against all hope. Abraham believed God. Abraham against hope, even the deadness of the womb of Sarah. Abraham never gave up and he defiles every law of man. Against hope, Abraham was fully convinced. He was fully persuaded in God. You must have the hope and the faith to hold on to God. Now what is faith? I've explained faith. But now faith is aligning your spirit man with the divine revelation. Faith is aligning your spirit man with the divine revelation. Inspired by what conviction and is delivered by what action. You must know that whatever God has said concerning your life, you must believe in your spirit and you must be convinced and you must take action. James says faith without action is dead. Whatever God has said about you, if you hold on to his promises and believe God, whatever God has said will surely come to pass. The Bible says, learn to let go in your former days. Paul said, one thing I do, forgetting the things of my yesterday, pressing on towards the mark of the higher calling. Tonight, I want you to know the book of Micah chapter 5, verse 7 going. He said, do not laugh at me, my enemies, for when I fail or fall, I shall rise again. Don't let people determine and don't let life determine your future. Don't let people use your past to mock you and decide your future. Let the word of God decide for you. Tonight, I came here to empower you to learn to overcome and to fight against every past that the enemy is using to fight against your future. You are not your yesterday, but God will use your yesterday to develop you and to mold you to become the person he has commissioned and ordained you to be. Your past will not be a hindrance to you. May you receive strength. The Bible says he giveth power and strength to those who are weak and those without might he strengthened. As you hear my voice tonight, may the Lord strengthen you. May Jehovah Amashiach grant you grace to rise against every past life, every sin that keep confronting you, every character you have let go but keep coming up, the old friends, the old attitude, the old character, some of the things you have fought to let go and they are still coming. I pray that God will give you grace. May God bring you into a new season. May you have the grace to renew your mind. As God bring you into a new place, as you develop right perspective about who God is and the love of God for you, I pray every purpose of God concerning your life will come to pass. It's my prayer and I decree upon your destiny that you will not die premature. Every spirit of suicide confronting your destiny by the blood of Jesus will nullify in Jesus' name. I pray tonight as you hear my voice. May you step into a new season of breakthrough and may you learn to overcome your past and move into a season of success and a season of what? Prosperity. I said earlier, successful people have the habit of eliminating negative 
attitude from their life. And one of the attitudes you need to fight and overcome in your life to move into a new season and become successful in life is overcoming your past. May the Lord bless you as you have heard my voice tonight. This is Pastor Bernard of Faithway Global Ministries, United Kingdom, all the way from Coventry, from Choices TV and radio station. And there is something happening soon i'll be launching my coaching school which is called oasis leadership development and i'll be sharing soon i'll be announcing and sharing with you the platform that you can be watching us live and where you can get me how you can subscribe to my youtube and it will be a nice time to watch me everywhere and i'll be giving you the days and the times we'll be sharing all the videos and everything May the Lord bless you so much. If you want to buy any copies of my books, by the special grace of God, I have written four books. I have eight books pipeline coming out soon. Please get in touch. Go on Amazon and put Bernard OO entry. Bernard OA entry. All my books will come on Amazon or contact me personally. Or send me a message on the email showing on the screen. And I will get in touch with you. If you need any advice, any counseling, if you are in the vicinity of Coventry and you don't have any church to go, please contact our email address and come and see what God is doing. Whatever issue you have, just come to the house of the Lord. If you know anyone who is sick, bring them to the house of God. And that person will be delivered by the name of Jesus. I love you and I will see you once again. May the Lord bless you and remember us always in prayers as we are about to launch our coaching school, Oasis Leadership Development. May the Lord bless you and I love you. See you at the top. Bye-bye.